1994, I went to my first Stoke game. It was Piacenza versus Stoke in the Anglo-Italian Cup. The Anglo-Italian Cup, if you don't know, was um, a competition between English and Italian teams that kind of ran through the 90s and is now defunct. They don't, they don't do it anymore. Um, but it was a really it was a really interesting competition. Anyway, Stoke won that game 4-0. Doesn't matter, you know, not not bragging. Um, but I've been a big fan of well, not a big fan, but I've I've had a soft spot for Piacenza ever since. Something about them was exotic and interesting to me. And I think like any anybody growing up in the 90s watching football in the 90s there's a certain fascination with Italian football due to the World Cup Italian 90, due to Galazzo, um, the TV show that was on Channel 4. So for Football Manager 19, I'll be taking charge of Piacenza. And there's a bit of a philosophy and a reasoning behind the save. Um, and there are some goals that I want to achieve during the course of the save. <laughs> So, back when I saw Piacenza play Stoke, they were in Serie B at the time, after having just been relegated from Serie A uh, the season before, and in the seasons that followed, they kind of yo-yoed up and down the league between Serie B and Serie A. Eventually, they settled in Serie A for about a kind of nine-year period. I think they got relegated once in that period, but it roughly, you know, nine to, ten, nine to ten years, they were in Serie A. They weren't great over that time, admittedly, their highest finish was 12th, which in itself is deceptive, and that was in the 0102 season, but that's deceptive just because in that particular season, 12th place was only three points off relegation. However, in that same season, they did boast the league's top goalscorer, and we'll come on to that in a minute. Currently, Piacenza are kind of languishing in Serie C, they haven't been able to, to work their way back up the leagues. so. Goal one is to get Piacenza back in Serie A and ideally win some silverware along the way. That would be great um, and even better to push them into Europe. But let's let's deal with one thing at a time. First off, let's get them up the, up the divisions and get back into Serie A. Piacenza were formed in 1919. So 2019 is their centenary year, 100 years old. Having said that, the club was in sort of bad financial difficulty around 2012 and they were actually declared bankrupt. So I guess technically you could say that the club ended there, the team was disbanded. But during that period, um, a regional amateur club called Libertas Bez, don't know if that's how you pronounce it, I don't know, someone will probably tell me I've said that wrong. Uh, Libertas Bez bought the Piacenza kind of brand, if you like, um, and was renamed Lupa Piacenza. By and large, this is considered to be the same club and the popular consensus is that this was just a purchase to facilitate the revival um, of Piacenza. Eventually the club was renamed Piacenza Calcio, as we now know it today, um, and it is the same club. So Piacenza Calcio was formed 1919. Probably didn't even need to bother going into that, but it leads into goal two, which is, well, firstly, don't go bankrupt, um, but really the aim is more to manage the club's finances wisely um, and responsibly and to ensure a financially sound football club. Now. Earlier, we mentioned that Piacenza um, had the joint Capocannonieri winner, um, top scorer in Serie A, in the 0102 season. Well, that was Dario Hubner, Il Bisonte, is his nickname. And he's a Piacenza legend and a, and a bit of a kind of folk legend in general of Italian football, if you like. Um, Hubner was an Italian striker, despite his um, deceptively German surname. And he played for various Italian clubs over his over his career. He was a kind of larger-than-life character, um, and a kind of enigma, really, in that he was essentially just a normal, working-class guy, almost an imposter. He shouldn't have really been playing professional footballer. Football. He was far from the archetypal footballer. He drank, and he smoked openly, and he saw no issue with this. In fact, he was once seen smoking on the bench when when he played for Brescia. Um, he was far from the athlete that a Serie A player was kind of expected to be around that time. Bear in mind that this was when Serie A was perhaps the most popular league in the world. And Hubner had little skill or finesse really, he was essentially a bit of a brute, hence the nickname Il Bisonte, which means the bison. Um, but the thing that mattered, you know, he could find the goal. And so, despite all this, 
he, he made it, you know, um, eventually. And I say eventually because when when Hubner shared the Capo Cannonieri, the Serie A top scorer award, with David Trezeguet, no less, he was 35 years old. So a grappa drinking 35-year-old smoker scored as many goals as David Trezeguet. Um, pretty crazy. Now, there, there are so many amazing stories about Hubner, and he's a real legend, and there's so many interesting interesting facts about him. I won't go into it all here, but um, if you want to find out more, I'll put some links in the description to a couple of things. There's a, a really good article on these football times that goes into it in more detail, um, and there's a Golazzo podcast episode specifically about Hubner, and if you don't listen to the Golazzo podcast already, it's really, really good. You should check it out. Um, I'll put the links in the description. So this legend of Il Busante, of, of Dario Hubner, represents the next goal for my Piacenza save, which is give Piacenza a new bison. Um, not necessarily a brute, it doesn't have to be the same type of player as um, Hubner was, but just a Serie A goal scorer, top goal scorer, you know. It would be brilliant if we could bring them up through the leagues, it, it kind of in parallel to Hubner's real life career, but realistically just, just a Serie A top scorer um, and a kind of new club hero would be brilliant. So, to recap, um, goal number one, get back to Serie A. It, it's a pretty obvious one, I guess it's the goal that anybody has for a football manager save, is to get promoted and go up the leagues and be the most successful that you possibly can be. Um, but in this case it has some relevance in that, um, I guess, Piacenza have kind of fallen from grace a little bit. Uh, number two, financial security let's make sure the team don't go bankrupt for a start um, and then let's try and just run a financially sound club let's not let's not blow our money um, on players we can't afford with wages that are ridiculous and then number three let's create a new bison a new hero for Piacenza somebody who's going to score us goals and when I say a new hero I want that to be a striker so there you have it something to kind of get you excited for the Piacenza save um, also, to get you excited, here are some kits that I've created alongside Casey Renzi. Thanks, Andre. Um, and these are designed with a kind of nod to one of the Piacenza shirts that Hubner would have worn back in the day. Um, not specifically the 0102 season shirt. These are more of a kind of a modern take on the 0203 season shirt. Uh, but still, you know, just because I kind of liked the 0203 season shirt better, it was a little bit more simple and minimal. We're going to start off by, as, as you would do, assessing the current squad, working out what kind of tactic we're going to play, and also delving into the new features of Football Manager. Obviously, the new tactics, the new training, really interested to, to have a look at those and all the new goodies in there. The stadium tour videos are going to continue as well. A little bit of fun that um, people seem to, seem to like, where we essentially go and scout our opposition stadium uh, and facilities before... Uh, the actual game. I say we scout it. We don't. We just mess about. We go and have a look at this quick look at the stadium, and then we go around town looking for ultras and weirdos. Plus, I'm potentially going to go a little bit too far and do something a little bit a little bit extra on top of that, which is I haven't worked out exactly how I'm going to do it yet. But essentially, my Italian pronunciation is not very good. Um, I know a little bit of German. I know a little bit of Spanish. But Spanish actually conflicts with Italian a little bit, and I end up pronouncing Italian things a bit Spanishy. And so, I'm going to try and learn a little bit of Italian and record it <laughs> and see see how that goes. Just pronunciation and stuff. I'm not going to go into into detail with it, but perhaps you know either something like each episode, or or maybe maybe in a in a small little series of films by themselves, I'll learn a little bit of some basic Italian. I'm just holding up this notebook <laughs> uh, like I'm giving you a red card or something. I'm just holding this up to block out the light that's coming through the skylight up there. You can see here it's a bit annoying. So, yeah, essentially, that's it. I'm really excited about it. And hopefully you are too. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. 